This video will review the CalGrant reconciliation and compliance process. First, we will talk about the compliance review. If a school is selected for a review, this is the process it will go through. The first step is the initial contact. The school will receive a phone call from an auditor approximately two to three months prior to the scheduled field or desk review date. The auditor will provide school staff with the date of the review, the academic year, and the programs that will be reviewed. And the compliance review is an institution-wide responsibility that usually includes multiple offices. After the initial contact, school staff will receive an engagement letter confirming the review date and itemizing the information and documentation that the school needs to submit to the auditor. These items include school catalogs, student expense budgets, policies and procedures for the review period, a completed program survey, and any documents are reviewed prior to the arrival of the auditor at the institution. Then, an entrance interview will be conducted with school staff responsible for administering the commission programs. The auditor will explain what to expect during the review for the week and answer any questions to facilitate the review process. A field review involves a site visit lasting approximately four to five days where 40 student files are selected at random. The student's documents provided by the school will be examined by the auditor and any findings are documented. Questions, comments, and non-compliance issues will be directed to the school contact. The contact will have an opportunity to provide a written explanation and any necessary supporting documentation. A daily wrap-up allows for the financial aid office to discuss discrepancies identified on a daily basis. The auditor will conduct an exit interview with school staff summarizing the outcome of the review. Then, the draft report is a 60-day process which includes peer review and management review. The report is mailed but can be emailed upon request. The school will receive the draft review report identifying areas of non-compliance and required action. The school then must respond within 30 days from receipt of the draft review report. After all outstanding issues have been resolved, the school will receive a final report closing the review. Please note that this review process is standard for all reviews and not just program compliance. This slide reviews some of the top audit findings. The first is not verifying transfer entitlement eligibility correctly with the correct AB 840 verification documentation. For AB 540, the finding is not collecting the affidavit or the citizenship status is incorrect for the DREAM Act application. Another finding is if the student education level was verified incorrectly. SAP can be a finding if it's found to not be in compliance with Title IV, also if a school has no written policies and procedures, or non-compliance with the Information Security and Confidentiality Agreement. This slide provides samples of the types of policies all schools should have in place to appropriately administer the CalGrant program. Ensuring that your campus has such policies will help establish good practices and will increase the likelihood of a successful audit. The majority of institutions have a bank account where funds are initially deposited. Then funds can be swept into an investment pool with a different bank. The investment pool must be interest bearing. Any interest accrued on undisbursed CalGrant funds must be returned to the commission. Interest of remittance is due March 1st for the prior calendar year. In this section, we will cover the reconciliation process and the reports you can use to assist you with this process. The big question is, what is reconciliation? Reconciliation is a verification that all CalGrant funds have been dispersed to students and those disbursements have been correctly reported to the Commission via the Web Grants roster through the application of the appropriate payment codes and dollar amounts. Think of it this way. The Commission provides funding to your institution's fiscal office as well as reports for that funding so that your fiscal office can successfully track and monitor all CalGrant funds. The Commission also provides the Financial Aid Office with various reports and rosters used for reporting disbursement information to the Commission. 
your institution's registrar, financial aid office, and the fiscal office may all collect different documents that may be necessary to reconcile payments. So it is important for all of these offices at your institution to be sharing and making accessible the various documents that are needed for reconciliation with each other. All too often, we see these offices work in silos and neglect to share necessary documents with each other. Remember that if an institution is selected for a compliance review, the entire institution is being reviewed, not just the financial aid office. Per the 2017-2021 Institutional Participation Agreement, institutions are required to reconcile payments no later than 60 calendar days after the end of the payment period. In addition, reconciliation does not preclude adjustments or payments after that date. Also, as announced in the Grant Operations Memo, the 2017-2021 IPA was amended to extend the IPA term through June 30th of 2023. Before we get into the operational details of reconciliation, let's take a look at the timeline. From August 2020 to June 2021, Campuses will disperse the bulk of their Cal Grant awards and also report the payments in the web grant system. From July to September, schools generally make any final necessary corrections. Then, in mid to late September, the Commission permanently closes the award year. After the award year has closed, the Commission sends out invoices to institutions that have Cal Grant money left over. These funds belong to the state and must be remitted to the Commission along with accrued interest. In October, institutions that have not returned the excess funding to the Commission will receive penalty letters which, if not paid, could result in the loss of future term advances, supplemental payments, or even termination of your institution's Cal Grant participation. Here are the four steps to accurate reconciliation. The first one is to ensure that payment and student statuses are reported to the Commission correctly. The second is to account for funds received from CSAC, the third to verify accuracy of disbursement amounts for each student, and the fourth is to ensure that any remaining funds are returned to the Commission after final reconciliation. We will go over each step individually and explain what it means. The first step is verifying accuracy of disbursement amounts, which means ensuring that your school is disbursing the correct amount a student is eligible to receive. You may find that you need to change a student's eligibility or adjust a payment. If you find you need to report any changes that affect eligibility for new or renewal students, your office needs to send a Grant Record Change Form, or G21, to the Commission. G21 forms are used to update a student's Cal Grant eligibility, such as new financial information or grant data changes, including a dependency status change. Adjusting payments for other reasons, such as attendance status, for example, are not reported on a G21 form, but instead on the Cal Grant roster with the student's payment. This also includes ensuring that you are correctly adjusting tuition awards for students who withdraw from your institution. The Cal Grant award should not exceed the charged tuition amount. One aspect you should be aware of is a student's limited eligibility for certain situations, because as we know, not every student is in the same financial situation. A limited eligibility example could be that a student is receiving a final payment or has 12% remaining eligibility versus 50%. In cases such as these, a prorated amount will show on the Web Grants roster because the student only has that remaining Cal Grant percentage left. In Step 2, Cal Grant funds are received at the business office of the educational institution. As a financial aid administrator, you will be able to check the amount of funds being sent by checking the monthly payment activity report, which is available in Web Grants. Depending on your school's preferred method, the funds will come via a warrant or an electronic funds transfer or EFT. If you have questions about your funds or about the EFT, please contact the Commission. Supplemental payments are sent on a weekly basis via check for reconciled payments or adjustments, typically after an advance has been exhausted. These supplemental payments are deductions from the running Cal Grant balance. When all Cal Grant funds are exhausted, the State Controller's Office is contacted automatically and additional funds are sent via EFT or warrant. 
all supplemental payments will appear on the following month's monthly payment activity report. You should become very familiar with the monthly payment activity report, which is accessed through the data transfer menu in Web Grants. While it is titled monthly, this report is actually generated on a weekly basis over the weekend. This report is the equivalent to a CalGrant bank statement. It will show both an overall summary of your transactions by term, as well as detailed transactions. This report is cumulative, so when you view the latest report, it will include transactions from the beginning of the academic year up to the latest transactions. This screenshot illustrates that the monthly payment activity report is actually produced weekly. You can click the icon in the right column to download the report. Here is an example of what the report looks like. Any fall, winter, or spring advances or credits that your school is eligible for are displayed, followed by your reconciled payment transactions or debits. The running balance is shown on the far right until all advanced funds are exhausted. Once exhausted, the State Controller's Office will automatically apply additional supplemental payments to always keep the balance at zero. We can see that this school received a fall advance on August 12, 2020 and exhausted all advance funds on November 27, 2020. This triggers the State Controller's Office to bring the CalGrant funds back to a zero balance. Supplemental payments will continue to be transferred each time payments are reconciled or until the next term advance. Please note that the initial fall advance is 95% of the CalGrant payments that the school reconciled for the fall term of the previous year. Winter and spring advance amounts are subject to state budget and typically range from 25% to 50%. Not all institutions qualify for fund advances each term. New schools or schools with provisional status do not receive advances. The last section of this report is a summary broken down into school terms and sorted by reconciled and unreconciled transactions. This section also displays the grand total of payments reported by term and for the year. The third step of the reconciliation process is you must verify disbursements by ensuring that payments reported to the Commission accurately reflect the amount disbursed to each student. You should check for reconciled payments or adjustments RP or RA on a weekly basis using the Accept Reject report. You can utilize the Reconciliation Summary report and Detailed Data report to compare against your accounting ledger reports. Let's first look at an example of the reconciliation process before we go over the actual reports. Ultimately, when reconciling the disbursements reported on your school ledger against CSAC reports, you want to true up both sets of records on a student-by-student -student level, but there are a couple of steps to get there. You'll first pull the Reconciliation Summary Report to identify discrepancies by term, CalGrant A, B, or C, and by award type, tuition and fees, access, or books and supplies. After identifying discrepancies, you will pull the detailed report to see specifically which students' records have discrepancies. To fix any of these, you will end up either correcting a payment in web grants or adjusting the actual amount of the disbursement on the school ledger. Let's look at a simulation of the reconciliation process. In a few slides, we will show you the actual reports used, but let's start with this simple example. This slide demonstrates the need to reconcile at the student level, not just by looking at the bottom line. On the left side of the screen, we see student payments reported in web grants, while listed on the right are disbursements according to school records. At first glance, if we only look at the bottom line, it appears that both totals match. However, unless we look at the individual student detail, we may overlook some discrepancies. For example, notice that the school disbursed funds to one additional student than what was reported in web grants, Kyle, student number six. In a few slides, we will go over how to drill down to the student level detail needed to locate this error on the reconciliation reports. Once we've verified that the disbursement made by the campus was accurate, we will go ahead and post Kyle's payment to web grants to balance our records. This is an example of a simple reporting error on the web grant side. After reporting Kyle's payment in web grants, we compare the totals again. 
However, when we look at the totals now, we see that they do not match. This mismatch means that there is another error. Take a look at Nick. His payment was reported in Web Grants as $2,871, but the amount dispersed by the school was only $775. Now you will need to verify whether this is a Web Grants reporting error or if the disbursement was reported incorrectly. After reviewing Nick's enrollment status, we find that he was eligible for the full-time payment of $2,871 but was short paid. To correct this, we will have to do two things. The first is to pay the student the difference he is owed, and the second is to update the school records to accurately reflect the full-time disbursement amount. After we've corrected this, we see that the total payments reported in Web Grants now match the actual disbursements. In this simplified example, we used a sample of six students, but when you are verifying your students, your list will be much larger and can be daunting to rectify if you wait until the year end. Therefore, it is best practice to reconcile throughout the academic year, either monthly or during each term. Whichever method you decide to use, please ensure that the payments reported in Web Grants match your actual disbursements before final year end reconciliation, and this will help reduce stress and will ensure a successful audit. Remember, this was just an example. Next, we're going to review the two reconciliation reports, the summary report and the details report. To retrieve these reports, you will click on Roster slash Reconciliation under the CalGrant section on the WebGrants homepage, then click on Display Reconciliation. The purpose of the summary report when used in tandem with your school's accounting ledgers is to identify discrepancies within each term and CalGrant type. Once the area of discrepancy is identified, you will then run the detailed report to view the student-by-student -student disbursements reported in WebGrants. On the Format field, select CSAC Standard Reconciliation, choose the Academic Year, and then on the Display Type field, use the drop-down to select Summary Report. Then click Download Report to populate the report. Similar to the layout in the Summary section of the Monthly Activity Report, the Reconciliation Summary Report displays year-to-date data and shows the total dollar amount of CalGrant payments reported for each term by CalGrant type A, B, and C. It also displays tuition and fees or books and supplies in the case of the CalGrant C, as well as access payments for CalGrant B. Let's now compare this WebGrants report with your school's ledger to see whether they match or whether we need to make any corrections. Using the CSAC summary report and your school's disbursement report, we will compare the totals for each CalGrant type A, B, and C, tuition and fees, access, and books and supplies. For example purposes, we will only reference CalGrants A, B, and not C. But if you are a CalGrant C administering campus, you would compare those totals as well. To the right of the screen is the school's disbursement report. Let's take a look and compare the two reports. First, let's compare the grand total of all CalGrant reported payments. We can see that there is a discrepancy. The school reported $86,422 dispersed in CalGrant funds, while the total reported in Web Grants was $87,197. That's a difference of $775. So let's drill down to see more detail and determine where the discrepancy lies. Let's take a look at CalGrant A. The totals do match, both reports reflect $6,979 dispersed, and next we'll look at CalGrant B totals. We can see that the figures do not match, so now we know that our $775 discrepancy lies with CalGrant B. The next step is to verify which term was reported incorrectly. To identify which term was reported incorrectly, let's compare the fall and spring totals on each report. We can see that the CalGrant B totals for fall term match, but spring does not. We now know that the issue lies with CalGrant B for spring term. On the next slide, let's drill down even further to compare the totals reported for tuition and fees versus the access awards. It appears that the tuition and fees amount are reported accurately, but the access award is not. We have finally located our error. 
Cal Grant B Spring Term Access Award. You can see that using the Reconciliation Summary Report, we have identified where the issue is. Now we're ready to pull the detailed Reconciliation Report to view the individual student payment information. From the same screen where the Summary Report is housed, we will access the Detail Report, which shows individual student payments. You'll recall that our discrepancy is with the Cal Grant B Spring Term Access Award. Therefore, we will filter the results to only display these records. Your reconciliation detailed report will look similar to this, although we have added colors to make it easy to see on screen. On the right, we have the school's disbursement report for Cal Grant B Spring Term Access Payments. We will now compare the results student by student. We want to identify the specific students whose payments were misreported so we can correct those records. We can see that nearly all student payments match. The only student who doesn't match is Phoebe Jones. In this case, an access payment of $3,004 was reported in web grants that she was only disbursed $2,229, which means that's where our $775 discrepancy is found. In reality, it may not be this easy to find the error. This screenshot only represents a small sample of students, but your report will likely be much larger. So to make it easier to organize all of this data, this is the point where you will want to import your report data to the macro-enabled Excel template, which we will see on the next slide. As with all CSAC reports, the detailed data report is a text file. Users can import this data into Excel for easy sorting and filtering by using our macro-enabled reconciliation template found in the Tools menu of Web Grants. This is what the report looks like once imported to the Excel reconciliation template. It allows users to add filters to easily sort column data, like sorting the last name field alphabetically to ultimately find our student with the discrepancy Phoebe Jones. The last step is to ensure that any remaining funds are returned to the Commission after final reconciliation. Final reconciliation is in September following the award year. For the 2020-2021 academic year, the reconciliation deadline was announced via listserv as September 16th. All payment adjustments and corrections should be done prior to September. After final reconciliation, any excess funds must be returned to the Commission and cannot be applied towards another student or carried over to the next award year. Invoices for excess funds will be sent to institutions in January of the following year and are due back to the Commission within 30 days. If there are any disputes regarding invoices, they will not be reviewed until the invoice is paid in full. To return undisbursed excess Cal Grant funds, please submit a check made out to the California Student Aid Commission to return funds for the closed academic year. Please include an enclosed letter of explanation that explains the following, the student name, CSAC ID number, term for which funds are being returned, amount, and contact information. Please mail the envelope to the address listed on this slide. Some best practices we have for reconciliation include the following do's and don'ts. Please maintain updated written policies and procedures, maintain a detailed audit trail, reissue or return stale data checks to the commission, please make the necessary adjustments using the proper adjustment codes and web grants. If you have any trouble making adjustments, please contact our institutional support. Also regularly review the reports, if returning funds, we ask that you send funds after receiving an invoice from the Commission at the close of the academic year. We also ask that you attach the letter of explanation with the return funds so that the money can be properly applied. The Commission encourages schools to train new staff on these processes so the Cal Grant program is operated in a consistent manner. We have many useful training materials, including the on-demand mini-modules, as well as pre-recorded webinars available on our website. Following the Commission's best practices for reconciliation will help your school avoid confusion and streamline the reconciliation process. Please engage with us on social media where we post important updates and deadlines for students and schools. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please contact school support by phone or email.